Earlier today, I counted the files that I regularly back up and keep in my directory and found that there are more than 700,000. In order to organize them, I keep them in various directories or folders. In this unit, we'll see how we can create folders, how we can specify files in absolute and relative terms corresponding to the current directory, how we can recursively process files in folders, and so on. Relative paths allow us to express a file relative to the directory we are currently in. The pwd command displays the path of the current directory. It stands for print working directory. I'm currently in home dds, which is my home directory. With make dir, I can create new directories. Here, I'm creating a directory named a. Using cd, we can change the current directory to the specified argument. In this case, I cd to the a directory. So, if I now type pwd, we see that I'm in home dds a. Each directory has a link to its parent directory with a special name, dot dot. By ccing to dot dot, I move up one directory and my current directory is again home dds. Now, if I cd dot dot and move one more level up, I get to the home directory. By repeating the command, we reach the top-level directory called root. From the root directory, we can navigate back to our current directory by combining the various path elements separated by slashes. Therefore, cd home dds a is the same as cd'ing to home, then to dds, and lastly to a. The same occurs moving up directories. By cd'ing to dot dot slash dot dot, I move up two directories and reach the home directory. Finally, entering cd with no arguments takes us to our home directory. Absolute paths express a file's location relative to the top, the root directory. First, using cd, I move to my home directory. To move to another directory with an absolute path, we precede the path with a slash. So, cd slash tmp takes us to the tmp directory. From there, we can use an absolute path to go straight to our home directory, which in my case is slash home slash dds. The slash is the root directory. It's useful to have a brief idea of what directories exist there, so let's have a look. The first one, bin for binary, is the place where the most essential commands are stored. In boot, there are files related to the system's operation at startup. Dev is a special directory corresponding to the devices of the system. From dev, one can access the terminal, the tape drive, the disks, etc. etc is a directory with administrative information associated with the system. Home contains the private files of the users. lib, for library, maintains data files associated with various commands. Lost and found is a special directory that is used during disk maintenance to store files that are found without proper linkage to other directories. On the other hand, the MNT directory, which stands for mount, is used for mounting external storage devices, such as USB flash drives. PROC contains information about the system. We'll examine this directory in more detail later on. SBIN, for system binaries, stores essential files used by the system administrator. TMP gathers the temporary files of the system, particularly files that are used and then get deleted. USR, for user, is used for storing additional commands in libraries that are not essential for booting up the system. Lastly, VAR, for variable, contains files that vary during the system's runtime, such as log files and mail files. If I move to USR, I notice some common files with the root directory. There is again a bin directory for binaries of less essential commands, which are not needed during the system's startup. There is a games directory with some simple console games, an include directory with the headers of C and C++ programs, and another lib directory with additional libraries. In addition, there is a local directory that maintains information about locally installed commands, and more system binaries are found in SBIN. 
The shared directory contains text and documentation that can be shared among diverse systems independent of their architecture. And finally, the SRC directory stores the source code of various commands and libraries. Let's now see some basic commands you can use to manipulate files. Let's create a file named Ken containing the words Ken Thompson, another one named DMR containing the words Dennis M. Ritchie, and a third one named a file. By running ls in the current directory, we see that it contains a file, Ken, and DMR. Incidentally, Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie are the two main creators of the Unix operating system at the legendary Bell Labs. To remove a file, we use the rm command. If I enter rm a file and list the files of the current directory again, we see that there is only Ken and DMR now in it. To rename a file, we use the mv command, which stands for move. As an example, I move Ken into Ken in uppercase, and after listing the files, we see that there is Ken now in uppercase and DMR in lowercase. To create a new directory, we use the command mcdir. Let's use mcdir to create a directory na called names. I now move Ken into names, and Ken no longer exists in the current directory. We can also specify a complete new name for a file. For instance, I move DMR into the directory names, changing at the same time its name to DMR in uppercase. Listing the names directory, we verify that it contains Ken and DMR both in uppercase. To copy a file, we use the command cp after copy. So, after copying names slash Ken to dot, dot represents the current directory, I list the contents of the current directory once more, and we see that there is the file Ken and the directory names here. Catenating Ken, we verify that it contains Ken Thompson, which are the original contents of the file I previously copied. To remove a directory, there is a different command called rmdir. After creating a directory with makedir and then removing it with rmdir, the directory no longer exists here. Let's now see commands and command line options that allow you to recurse directory hierarchies. I create a directory named files with two files in it, A and B. Trying to copy files into another directory, files2, we notice that CP results in an error, informing us that the directory files cannot be copied. Listing the current directory, we verify that it still contains files. CP allows us to specify an R option, which stands for recursive copy. With this, I can copy files into files2 along with all its contents. By listing files2, we verify that it indeed contains files A and B. Similarly, ls accepts a capital R option, which provides a recursive listing. In this case, it displays that the current directory contains directories files and files2 along with their contents files A and B. On the other hand, rmdir fails to remove non-empty directories, so attempting to remove directory files2, we get a warning that the directory is not empty. To bypass this warning, we need to specify the minus rf option to the command rm, which stands for recursive force remove, force for removing read-only files without asking. In this way, if I enter rm minus rf files2 and then list the contents of the current directory, we notice that files2 is now removed. Be careful with rm minus rf, as it's one of the most dangerous commands. Depending on your privileges, rm minus rf slash force deletes everything in the root directory, while rm minus rf star or rm minus rf dot force delete everything in the current directory. This concludes our foundations unit on files and directories. Stay with us.